this is a good sword. <laughs> so today we've got uh, Medieval Warriors 9th Century Viking Sword. Put that heavily in quotes because that's just a ridiculous statement. Um, the sword itself handles decently well for a Viking sword because anyone familiar with swords from the spirit will know that they're pretty top heavy. They don't feel as elegant as a later medieval period army sword. Really feel like they're made for hacking. So the balance is going to be a lot higher up than uh, than I would normally like. This sword, um, guessing, I wasn't able to find much direct inf information about the company uh, Medieval Warrior, but based on the price point and the make, I would guess India or Pakistan or... No, what was your guess? No, oh, I said Bangladesh just to be contrary. Okay, Bangladesh was Noah's guess. Um, I don't know. It appears to be hand-forged, just from the way that the blade sits. Uh, the site lists it as high carbon steel, doesn't say what. My guess would be 1045 to 1060, somewhere in there, because price point-wise, that's kind of what it feels like. Uh, we've already tested it out in some cutting tests. It's fared pretty well against green wood, plastic bottles, the like, you know, so it hasn't hasn't had any problems. It uh, is full tang, at least it appears to be from construction, and that's what the website advertises, but... I would say evidence shows. Uh, evidence shows that it's not peened. I can't see any evidence that it was peened. So my guess would be uh, threaded, probably glued because it just feels solid and you can't twist it off and it's thread pretty hard. Uh, Material-wise, other than the blade, which I've already said is high carbon steel, which variety I don't know, uh, the cross guard and the pommel appear to be cast brass, um, solid, it seems like, from the weight and uh, just the general heft of the weapon. The guard is made, I mean, the hilt is made to look like wood, but I think it's actually resin, just done based on how it performs. And if I was going to complain about the sword, the only thing I would complain about would be that that's actually a bit slippery for me. I would prefer something more traditional like cord wrapping or leather or something on top of it to make it a little bit better in the hand, because it does slide around a bit. That being said, it has a decent enough oval shape, maybe a little bit too thin, but the shape is right to help with edge alignment. It's not too round. Other than that, uh, talking about the blade specifically, as you'll be able to see, I'll come close to the camera here. It's got a pretty aggressive secondary bevel here, which I hope you can see on the camera. It's kind of hard to, uh, to show that. Not what I would call the best sharpening job in the world. Honestly, that probably comes down to whoever sharpened this, because if it shipped from India, it was probably whoever distributed the sword that sharpened it. Uh, as you can see, the sh it starts being sharp about here, maybe four inches from the cross guard which is pretty standard for how most people will sharpen swords of this type these days. It's got a very deep fuller running most of the length of the blade, which helps with uh, weight reduction a lot because this is a pretty thick blade. It's about two and a half inches or maybe a little bit less than that right at the cross guard. So it's a decently wide blade. It, it's advertised as distal taper. I don't have a dial caliper on hand to test that, but I don't know if I believe that because it looks to be about the same thickness at the tip as it does. I mean, unless you count the fact that this is unsharpened here, as to mean distal taper, but I don't. Blade's straight, even after testing it quite a bit. It hasn't warped at all, hasn't bent. As far as flex goes, there's a little bit about what you'd expect from something like this. Seems to be tempered at least decently well. Sits well in the hand, and as far as swords from this time period, or reproductions go at least, it actually isn't as unwieldy as a lot of them are. So, honestly, for the price point, which I believe right now is right around $220 on Amazon. It was 240 Was it? Maybe 230 Somewhere in that range. Somewhere in the 220 to 240 range. It's reasonable. I would say if I was going to buy it because I just really liked how it looked, I would probably touch up the edge, do my own sharpening job. As is, it cuts decently well, so we're going to test it out a little bit. I mean, we already have, but I'm going to put it in the video now just to show you what it looks like cutting. You 
made me ink. Probably a pretty decent value, especially if you like the style of it, because it's a very artistic looking sword. We've got a lot of period accurate iconography all over it that I think a lot of people will really, really enjoy. Total length of this item is 39 inches. Blade length is 31 inches. So it's a decently long weapon, as you can see. Uh, about, about waist height, standing on the ground. It does come with a scabbard, which I threw off at the beginning of the video, which is a wood core leather wrap scabbard with brass turnings. This one actually came damaged, so not terribly impressed there, but it's probably very thin. And it comes with a cheap hanger belt or baldric on it that you can use. So it's uh, out of the door. It's going to give you a decent value for what you're looking for. Cuts decently well, but being a Viking sword or Viking sword, it's not the best balanced for cutting like tatami mats or anything like that because of the way that it's weighted. Uh, that being said, not too bad. Probably would recommend it if this is what you are looking for, artistically speaking.